I've wanted to add my first Omega to the collection for a long time, but I've been finding it hard to nail down what specific reference would work best for me. After much debate, I ultimately opted for this nearly two decades old classic Seamaster Professional reference 225450. Omega is a brand that I really respect and think their watches deliver a ton of value while not being subject to hype-driven price fluctuations and supply chokes. I really like that Omega includes its renowned in-house movement with coaxial escapement even in watches priced under $6,000 like the Aquaterra and the Seamaster. Whereas other brands like IWC and Breitling typically use third-party movements for that price tier, only including in-house movements in their references priced closer to $10,000. I've tried on the Moonwatch, the current iterations of the Seamaster and the Aquaterra, but I didn't pull the trigger on these models. For some reason, the current Seamaster didn't quite feel right to me, and every time I try on the Aquaterra at a boutique, it always hits me with the polished hands and case under the bright lighting, and I get mixed feelings. The Moonwatch always looks great and fits really well, and I have come close to purchasing it. But in the end, while I love its connection to the 1969 manned mission to the moon, it doesn't speak to me a ton, and I wasn't around during that era, so I feel like I'm forcing it a bit. On the other hand, I'm a huge Bond fan, and I've seen every single Bond film. And while the franchise has showcased several brands including Rolex, Breitling, and Seiko, due to its relationship over the past 30 years, when I think of 007, I think Omega. I'm also a sucker for the 90s and early 2000s, as that was the period in which I grew up and experienced many of my life's highlights. This watch is obviously not the Bond Seamaster reference, as that model is more like the current iteration of the SMP, from the bracelet to the skeletonized hands, both of which I don't really like. This 225450 SMP reference provides that 90s, early 2000s vibe, but it has better hands and a better bracelet in my opinion. Many people consider this model to be the Peter Blake reference. Sir Peter Blake was a famous New Zealand yachtsman who won many sailing awards, and who was shot and killed by pirates in the Amazon in 2001. Ultimately, however, I don't really buy watches for their connection to famous people, fictional or otherwise, and I'm certainly not a yachtsman. So let's take a look at the merits of this watch. This reference was produced by Omega between 1996 and 2009. This specific watch, I believe, was produced around 2006, so it's over 16 years old at this point. I bought this watch on Chrono24 from Japan, and it was classified as very good, but with no box or papers. I think this was on the very upper end of the very good classification, as it looks nearly new, and even the broad scratch attracting clasp looks almost perfect. The prior owner took really good care of this piece. The dimensions of the stainless steel case are 41mm in diameter, without the helium valve or crown guards. 47.5mm lug-to-lug without the bracelet, and 52.5mm effective lug-to-lug -lug with the bracelet and links, and a mere 11.5mm in thickness. The case shape and size are spectacular, nice and broad but really thin, and this watch fits great on my 17cm wrist. The case is pretty much completely brushed except for the top of these shapely liar lugs, and the top of the crown guards which are polished. The black bezel encircling the dial has hash marks every second, and I really like the size and shape of the Arabic numerals. The bezel has Omega's classic scalloping to provide some grip, which works pretty well and looks good. There is a slightly domed sapphire crystal protecting the dial, and there is a screw down crown at the 3 and the SMP helium valve at the 10, both of which are signed. Some people hate on the small size of the crown on this piece, but I don't mind it, and I also like the more slim helium escape valve on this older model. This watch has a water resistance of 300 meters. The dial on this watch is simply stunning, and has a really fun retro look to it. Black in color with the characteristic SMP wavy texture, it provides some really nice light play. Stick painted hour markers with triangles at the 3, 6, 9, and 12, and there are longer hash marks at each second on the minute track circling the dial. The Omega logo sits at the 12, and the typical Seamaster text at the 6, with a matching date window at the 3. The minute and hour hands are solid sword or necktie shapes, and the second hand is a thin hand with a loom pip followed by a red tip. The hands and hour markers are filled with loom, and even after 16 years it shines incredibly brightly, which is really impressive. The bracelet on this reference is the 1610-930 model from Omega, which is fantastic and has a three link setup that tapers slightly from 20 millimeters to about 17 and a half millimeters and is fully brushed except for the edges of the inner links. 
This bracelet is more similar to the Moonwatch bracelet, which I like a lot more than the Bond SMP 5 link bracelet. The clasp is really secure with the two push button style, and there is a diver's extension, but there are no micro adjustments on the clasp, which is really unfortunate. And I've actually had to buy extra links and half links on eBay to size this appropriately. One small thing on the clasp that I love is that they have bridged the gap between the clasp and the bracelet links. They have added these gap covers so it is a more smooth transition and it won't get snagged on anything. It's a really nice small detail. The movement on this watch is the automatic Omega Caliber 1120, which is a chronometer certified movement with 23 joules, which beats at 28,800 beats per hour and has a 44 hour power reserve. This movement is based on the ETA 2892A2 and unfortunately predates the coaxial escapement. The movement has second hacking and there is a quick set date function. I have only had this watch for about a week or so, but I'm wearing it a lot and I'm completely in love with it. The quality of this 16 year old piece is incredible, and I think I got pretty lucky. I like that this gives you that retro vibe, but also fits very comfortably amongst newer watch models. This is a very versatile watch as well, which looks great in more formal attire, but also looks fantastic in shorts or jeans. I really like the classic wavy dial, and in the black color, it's a bit more subtle. This watch also delivers on the specs with a very accurate COSC certified chronometer, 300 meters of water resistance, and incredible loom. I think this watch can still compete with the modern references, especially at the price range for which it's currently selling, and I feel really happy that I'm able to take the torch and continue this watch's legacy. That's it for this video, thanks for watching, please leave a like and comment if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more. I'll see you in the next one.